In this video, we're going to be going over how to change the string on your kendama, and the most frequent question we get here is how often do you actually have to change the string on your kendama? There's a couple of different scenarios where you want to change the string. The first one being you want to change the color of your string. The second being you want to put a different tama or a different ken together to get even weights between the two. Uh, the third reason being that you just play with it so much, the string gets really gross and grimy, and it starts to fray and sometimes even breaks, and then you definitely have to change the string. And the last reason being is if you're left-handed, which is the most common reason you want to change the string, because you'll notice when you're holding the kendama in your left hand with the big cup facing up, that the string is hanging on the outside, when it actually is supposed to be hanging in on the inside. That way you can perform the kendama tricks properly. So in this video, we're going to be teaching you how to string the kendama if you're either right-handed or if you're left-handed. So let's learn how to do that. There's actually two types of kens that we're going to be showing you how to do. There's the standard where the serrato it actually comes off of the ken which is what most typical kendamas use. We're also going to show um, on a kendama where the serrato is fixed in. And these are actually designed to make stringing a lot easier. So we'll go over those in a minute. So the first step, you want to take a handy pair of scissors and you're gonna cut the string like this. And then you'll just simply take the string off of the tama right here. And then when you have a standard, you'll see that this gets locked in place so you can't slide it out. So you're actually just going to twist the serrato back and forth and pull the can off like that. And now you can see that the string can slide right out. And if you have the um, ken where it's fixed, when you cut it, you'll see you can just simply pull the string out of this ken. Now, when we're stringing this kanama, you'll notice in most string packs, there is a little tiny flosser. And this comes in handy in a lot of situations because sometimes um, the string is really hard to get through. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to take your tama and you're going to take the end of the string and just slide it through the tama like this on the top. And if you're having trouble with that, um, you can take your flosser and you put the flosser in first. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the string and put it into the loop of the flosser and push the flosser all the way through. You see it comes out on this end and you want to pull this through really nice and slow and you'll see the string comes right through, and it comes all the way out to the tama like that. Now what you want to do, you want to take the bead that came with your string, make sure you don't lose this, because this is what holds the tama onto the string. You'll slide the bead onto the string like this, and here we're going to tie a um, pretzel knot at the end. You can do a double knot, but I find that pretzel knots are much more secure. And now we're going to do a little close-up of how to tie a pretzel knot. So what you're going to do, so you take your string and you go to tie a regular knot where it's just a standard loop and you put the end of the string underneath. And you'll see now that the string actually looks kind of like a little pretzel. And you're going to take the end of the string and you're going to thread it underneath onto this opposite loop. So it comes underneath like this and you're going to pull it tight and you'll see that this knot actually is a little bit thicker than a standard knot and this also locks in really really well so that way when you're doing all your tricks and the beads constantly pushing on the knot it won't come out. So once we've done that you'll see that there's just a little bit of extra string sometimes so you can take your scissors and trim that off and then give the string a nice little pull make sure that bead is locked in there and if you do the pretzel knot like I said it should be pretty good to go. So now you have to string the ken, and it's really, really easy if you have um, one where it's fixed because all you have to do is you want to hold the ken in your dominant hand with the big cup facing up. And then you're going to take the string and you're going to thread it on the inside of your body. Um, in this case, it's going to be on the left side since I'm holding my right hand. And if you're left-handed with the big cup facing up, you'll see that the string goes through the right side. And then once you thread that through, you'll just tie a simple pretzel knot at the other end of the ken, and then your kendama will be strung. Now let's show how to do it with a standard ken, where it's two pieces. The first piece you want to string is the serrato. And you'll notice that there's a hole in the serrato where you string the ken, and you want to make sure that when you hold the serrato, that the big cups face up, and you want the hole to be um, facing outwards, like this. And you're gonna take the other end of the string and you're going to thread it through here. And if you are having trouble, you can use your flosser again um, to, and do that same technique. And you're gonna pull this through so that 
when you're right-handed, it's coming in through the left side when the big hoops face up, and if you're left-handed, it'll come on the right side with the big cup face up. So now once you have the string threaded through the serrato, like this, you're going to take the ken. If you look at the ken, you'll see that there's two different size holes. There's a bigger hole and there's a small hole. And this big hole is actually where the knot gets held so that it doesn't get jammed in between the serrato and the ken. So what you want to do is you want to take the string and you want to thread it through the small hole, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. And now at the end of the string, you're going to tie your pretzel knot again. just like this. And then if you have a little bit of extra string, you can just take your scissors and you can cut that extra off. And now you'll see that you still have three pieces of your whole condom right here. And what I like to do is I like to use the weight of the tama. Uh, and you'll see that this keeps the string really tight so that the serrato can slide really easily. And what you want to do is you want to have the where the string's coming out of the can facing upwards, and you also want it where it's coming out of the serrato facing upwards, so you can see that they line up really evenly on the string. And you're just going to slide this string through so it's nice and tight, and you're going to push this down. And once you feel a little bit of force um, and resistance, you're going to stop. You don't want to push the rest down with your hand because then you can risk, um, if, if you use your hand, you risk pushing the serrato down too far and it can actually ruin your can. So you want to take your tama and you want to push down like this and push it in where it stops. And that way you don't push your ken too far down and it's the, in the right placement for your balance tricks. So once you have the string fully on like this, now you need to measure the length. And the Japanese Kendama Association um, says that it must be an average of two um, fingers when you have the tama on the spike and you put your fingers through and you pull it. So you can see right here, Two to three fingers is the average length. You'll see I actually am right in between that two, which is perfect. And if you have it too long, because some strings are longer than others, um, all you simply need to do is take the string, and if it's too long, just pull it um, a little bit tighter, and you can see, you'll usually see it, you need to adjust about half an inch. So then you can just um, slide the string back through the tama, and you're just going to tie the knot. Um, you'll slide the bead up, you'll just tie the knot a little bit farther up. Not much, because if you do it like a full inch, you're actually going to shorten your string by about three inches. So um, just a little tiny measurements are your friend on this. And once um, you have that, another little tip, what you can do, if you do, if your kanama is getting really old and you're finding that the serrato is um, sliding off a lot, you can actually just take um, a glob of super glue and you're just going to super glue at the top of the serrato and the bottom of the serrato, just two little dots. And this will um, have enough so the serrato stays in place, but then if you do ever need to change the string, you can just give it a twist and break the super glue and slide the serrato off. And another tip, if you're doing a lot of tricks where the bead is um, coming out of the tama when you're doing your pull-ups, you can actually tie a knot um, above the tama. And to do that, all you'll do is you go to tie a standard knot, use the end of the ball, and just make sure that um, when the knot goes, it gets really close to the tama because you don't want it too high up. Just like that. And now you'll see that this knot prevents the bead from coming out of the tama, which is kind of nice during some tricks. And now you know how to string your kendama.